Christy Code Red, author, entrepreneur, retired professional boxer. And did you know I used to be a personal trainer? Well, you're gonna hear why I'm no longer a personal trainer in this video. In this video, I'm gonna tell you my story of how I got started in this industry and how I progressed to become the number one best trainer in New York and featured in numerous publications. And then I'll go through why I quit and the hard lesson I learned about exercise. And by the way, my hard lesson could save you a whole lot of heartache if you just listen to my lesson. And last, we'll cover how you can lose 10% of your body weight every month without exercise or needing a personal trainer. So my obsession with muscular women began when I was 13 years old. I was raised on a big farm in Northern Idaho and we were very poor growing up. We had one small TV that only got three channels. Hello, who out there remembers NBC, CBS, and ABC? I know you feel me, but at the time I'm recording this, I'm almost 45. So yeah, we had three channels. And I was standing in my living room one day and I saw on the TV a Miss Fitness USA competition. And I remember exactly what it was like when I saw those competitors on the screen. I became instantly mesmerized with those women. I thought they were beautiful. I thought they were powerful and strong and confident and agile. I was so taken back by this. I never wanted more than that moment to be a muscular woman. I set my sights on someday bodybuilding and someday learning and someday competing in a competition just like these ladies. Fast forward, I get out of high school, I immediately say, okay, I wanna learn about the fitness industry. I wanna learn about this industry. What do I need to do? I need to get a job at a gym. But I'm barely 18 years old and nobody even knows me and I don't know what I'm doing, so why would anybody hire me as a fitness instructor or anything? So I get a job at a gym cleaning toilets and cleaning gym mats. I didn't care because I was there at the gym. I'm around all these bodybuilders. I'm in the building. I'm absorbing that kind of energy. I didn't care. I just wanted to learn. I wanted to be around women like that. I was obsessed with how beautiful and powerful that they were. And I loved those muscles. So as much time as I could spend just being in the gym, I didn't care. I just wanted to be there, even if it meant cleaning up other people's dirty sweat off of the floors and the equipment and the mats. I went on to learn about bodybuilding uh, through the 1990s, through the 2000s. I got my hands on whatever I could. And back then the internet was not like it is now. So we didn't have the kind of connection and the kind of information at our fingertips like we have now. I started learning as much as I could through books, through listening to other people. Ever since I was 13, I knew that I wanted to compete in my own competition. Right around 2002 is when I decided I was going to compete in a bikini, like a figure competition. And NPC was putting on these competitions in the state of Tennessee where I was living at the time and I decided I was gonna compete. The problem was I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to diet. I didn't know how to train very well. I mean, I'm married at that point to Jason Nickel who played division one football for Ole Miss. So he put me through a workout that he would go through when he was back in his college football days. But I didn't understand anything about bodybuilding. I didn't have anybody to mentor me. Nobody helped me. I still registered and competed in three NPC competitions. That stands for National Physique Committee. When I got to the competition and I walked backstage and I saw the other girls that I was competing against, my heart absolutely sank. I had no idea how bad I looked. I wasn't nearly conditioned. I didn't diet the right way. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't dry out so you could see my muscles. I did get the spray tan at least. I didn't look nearly as good as these girls. And there were five of us in my category and I placed, well, dead last, as you can probably imagine. And I remember everybody kind of taking off their clothes, lining up to go out. And I took off my sweatpants that were over my competition swimsuit 
and I just felt immediately embarrassed. And I was like, oh, but it was my dream to compete. And I was gonna walk out on the stage no matter how bad I looked. And people didn't laugh and they didn't boo, at least I didn't hear them. But I got out there and I knew, I was very well aware of the fact that I looked so bad. I didn't have the conditioning. I didn't have what these girls had. I knew just put on a smile, go out there, do your best. So I went out there and I did my quarter turns and I, I did what I was supposed to do and I kept smiling even though they called my name last. And it was embarrassing. But I went on to compete two more times and placed a little bit better, but still didn't really know what I was doing. I just was desperate to do it. I wanted to make my dream come true of competing in a figure competition and I did it. That just further fueled my love for bodybuilding and my love for uh, muscular women. I love six pack abs and I love, you know, striated shoulders. And I, I just think it's beautiful. Anytime I see a muscular woman, I'm always like just mesmerized by her. And some people think that I'm a muscular woman. I don't think I am, but some people kind of look at me and they, they see muscles and I need to work on my bodybuilding a little bit more, but I just love muscular women. And I know that our society has kind of begun to accept muscularity as pretty and sexy like I do, like I think, but it hasn't come as far as I wish it would. Before I continue in my story, I want to stop and ask you to comment below and tell me what do you think about muscular women or about bodybuilding? Has that ever interested you or have you ever wanted to pursue that? Do you have any thoughts about that? Comment below. Tell me what you think. I stayed in the fitness industry. I stayed in the gyms for as long as I could. I've never really left gyms. And I went on to gain eight different certifications. I mean, I had certifications for everything I could get my hands on. I mean, it was everything from water aerobics to spin to silver sneakers to kettlebells to TRX. I mean, I wanted to be trained in every type of exercise. Plus, being a personal trainer with a NASM certificate meant that I was more marketable if I could teach numerous classes at different gyms. And that's what I did. I did personal training and I taught people as far as just one-on-one, -on -one, but I also did a lot of group fitness. And that was really fun. I remember I taught a couple of classes a day. Of course, Teaching classes pays like 11 to 13 bucks an hour. It's not very good and you can't really make a living off of it. But I just thought I was living high on the hog. I mean, I was so happy. I started my professional boxing career right after I did my first bodybuilding competition. And I just started boxing as a way to pay my way through college. I had no intention of it ever turning into what it was. And I kept personal training on the side because it was good to supplement my income, especially when people would pay me cash, right? When I came back from Beijing in 2005, after competing in a world title fight, I got a call from MTV. They said, hey, Christy, listen, we know you're a really good personal trainer. We know you're a great boxer. Would you star in one of our MTV shows called MTV's Made, where we take a high school kid and we make them into something they want to become? Something that's totally opposite than what they are. Like, you know, an ugly duckling turns into a pageant queen. Well, in my case, there was a girl who was smart and funny and pretty and really great young lady, but was super clumsy, super unathletic, super lazy. And MTV wanted to make her into a boxer. So I took the job as this girl's boxing coach on MTV's maid. MTV gave me six weeks to take this lazy girl and put her in the ring for a real fight. And I did. I spent time between Augusta, Georgia and Tampa, Florida, flew back and forth every week and I trained this girl and we were the season premiere of that season for MTV's Made. The success of that show propelled me to new levels and I got a job offer to train clients, celebrity clients at a boxing gym in the financial district of Manhattan. So I packed up and I left Augusta, Georgia and I moved to New York City, absolutely scared to death. I had my certifications, I had my personal training experience, I had my MTV show, and I started building up my list of celebrity clients. So my personal opinion about personal trainers, yeah, you need to know how to write programs for people. You need to understand uh, the physiology. You need to understand anatomy. You need to understand which movements go with what. 
but a big part of being a good personal trainer is your ability to communicate with that client. It does no good for that client if you do a really great barbell back squat and you get butt to the ground and you have perfect alignment if you can't get them to do that. So what good are you when you can't effectively communicate? You have to be able to communicate all that stuff to them. And another thing I think makes a great personal trainer is being on time, being prepared, looking professional, having your poop in a group, don't bring your problems to work, always have a good attitude. Doesn't matter if you don't feel good or if you have a headache or there's something going on with you, it doesn't matter, it's not about you. That client is paying you 70 to 150 bucks an hour to train them, be ready, be present and give them an excellent training session. Make sure you're thorough, make sure you do a good job and understand where your clients are coming from. This is why I've got a problem with 21 year old personal trainers. What the heck does a 21 year old personal trainer know about life? You got a 47 year old mother of three who's late to her personal training session because her kid is thrown up in the back seat. And then you got attitude from the personal trainer. That personal trainer is still living at home. She didn't know anything about kids and she doesn't get it. Well, that's what I think made me a great personal trainer because I was able to work with that client wherever they were in that stage of life. I was able to tailor my workouts for them, make it fun, make it interesting, make it effective. The funny thing about training celebrities at an exclusive gym in the Flatiron District of New York City, there were no cell phones back then that, that were the smartphones. We had Palm Pilots, okay? We had Blackberries back then. I know, I know all you youngins are laughing right now, but we didn't have easy access to cameras. I never thought to get a picture with Katie Couric, which was probably my biggest name client that I had, or Ethan Hawke, or Claire Danes, or any of the people that I trained, the singer Pink. I never thought to get pictures with them. I never thought, oh, someday I'm gonna want proof of this. Because back then we just didn't have cameras so readily available like we do now. Fast forward, I trained clients in New York City for right around five years and the market crashed. I lost all of my clients almost immediately because most of my clients were high-end clients and when they started losing their jobs, well, what of course they're gonna do, they're gonna cut off their $150 an hour personal trainer. So I was kind of forced out of New York and I moved back home to Idaho where I quickly picked up on my personal training career and my group fitness career career. I trained high-end clients at a, an exclusive one-on-one -on -one training facility in Boise. And funny thing happened. I actually started to get fat. Yeah. Even though I continued to be an elite level athlete, I was having migraines and st stomach aches. I was having IBS and I was fatigued. My body hurt. I had major cellulite. I had fat just hanging off my body and I didn't understand why. I'm riding my road bike 300 miles a week. I'm teaching group fitness classes multiple a day and I'm moving constantly. I'm lifting weights. Why am I battling this? I should feel good. And I didn't feel good. At the same time, my clients are coming to me for weight loss and they're doing what we were all taught to do, move more. My clients weren't losing any weight. They were getting strong. They were able to lift a lot of weight, but they weren't losing weight off their bodies. So I took a step back and I started thinking, well, what is the problem here? What am I getting wrong? And I found Mark Hyman's book, Eat Fat, Get Thin. And I tried out the high fat, low carb lifestyle on myself. Well, lo and behold, I lose my weight. I start feeling better and I start trying it out on my family members, my husband and a few various clients. I started using them for guinea pigs and it starts working. Well, it's working better and better and better. And I realized, wait a minute, this is much more effective. Treating obesity and getting weight off of people through their diet is way more effective than doing it through exercise. So I quit personal training and I opened up my own nutrition office in downtown Boise. I thought that the success had to be from seeing one-on-one -on -one clients and I didn't understand the power of the internet until Natasha came along, restructured Code Red to make me an online company so I could reach millions and that's what I've done. Since 2016, Code Red, as you know it, has been growing and thriving and spreading the message of hope and healing. I learned and I discovered that I could be way more effective just doing weight loss by way of diet than I ever could with personal training. 
because the hour that I was spending with a client personal training wasn't the only hour I had invested. I had to spend time before and after either traveling to and from the gym, writing their program, getting it ready. I always sh showed up early to the gym. So it was another hour investment on top of that. At least one hour's worth of pay turned into two hours worth of work. I was much more effective just running the code red lifestyle and addressing obesity and weight loss through nutrition alone. So the number one biggest lie in weight loss, I lived it myself and I'm going on to spread the message to you. And that is you can't address your weight problem through exercise. You're never going to be able to exercise off your weight problem. I couldn't. It took me changing my diet to a high fat, low carb lifestyle before I could actually lose the weight. And believe me, I tried, I tried to exercise sometimes up to five hours a day. I was riding 300 miles a week on my bike. I was doing everything. And maybe you're doing everything too. It's not going to work because I burned 300 calories during a three mile run and one pound of fat is 3,500 calories. So you're telling me I need to do just about 12 runs in order to burn one pound of fat. The math doesn't add up and you're just killing yourself for no reason. Listen, if this is you, stop. Stop killing yourself at the gym. Stop with the guilt and shame. You can lose all the weight you want without ever having to exercise. And of course I think exercise is healthy. I love exercise. I still go to a gym and the people in my maintenance program, I teach them the value of exercise for long-term good health, but it will not help you lose weight if you try to do it right now. CrossFit gyms are full of fat athletes, people who have a beautiful overhead snatch, 195 people who are deadlifting 405 and yet still asking for the seatbelt extender on the plane. Does that make any sense to you? Save yourself the heartache and address your weight problem through your diet. It's 100% diet. No, it's not 80, 20, 80% diet and 20% the gym. No, it's 100% diet, which means if you are in a wheelchair or you are missing a leg or you got a bum back, there is still hope for you. On the 10 pound takedown challenge, you're going to learn this and so much more because I come live to you every single day for 30 days and I teach you, I teach you the truth. It's learning, but it's unlearning what you've been brainwashed to believe and me, what I was brainwashed to believe for the last 70 years. What we learned was wrong and I can show you a better way. So I've linked it up below, click the link, join the next challenge, and I will see you on the next video.